Hey dudes! Hi! After several requests and since we've been living in Malta for almost two years, we decided to make our own pros and cons of living in Malta. First con right there. <laughs> we will first dive into the cons section, but we don't want to come across as if we're complaining or bitching about stuff because after all the pros and cons, we still enjoy our life here in Malta. Yeah, we just wanted to give our honest opinion on how it actually feels living here. And for this video, we're gonna skip on public transport and food prices because we've been talking about this a lot since ever we started recording videos. Mm -hmm. So, the first con of living in Malta is quite unusual, but it's power cuts. Before moving to Malta, I think I've experienced power cuts maybe twice in my life after really severe storms. But here in Malta, it happens like every two months and with no reason, with no explanation. So the first time I was at work and electricity just cut off and I was like, what the hell is happening here? And all my coworkers were just like, eh, another power cut. All right, let's continue working, no big deal. And I'm like, what? And the worst thing about these power cuts is that you don't know for how long are they gonna last. Is it gonna be five minutes? It might be the whole day. And we also have a feeling that Whenever something political is happening in the country, they kind of pull the switch so everyone gets distracted. But we don't really want to go down that rabbit hole. Can you tell us when was the last time when you got the power cut? Hmm? Mine was like, I think last week or something. Yeah, and the annoying part about it is that you have, since you work from home, you can't work without electricity and then you have to go to office and... Exactly, so all your like day gets kind of in a bit of a chaos so well so that's our first con about living in Malta so let's move on to the next one all right so our next con about living in Malta is how insanely loud is the central part of Malta as you can hear thankfully we have this example going on right now as every Sunday or actually every every day pretty much every day so starting with people who keep shouting throughout the day all your neighbors and sometimes even at night we have all these the traffic the cars keep beeping at each other for no reason we have constant fireworks for absolutely no reason even in the middle of the day they just experience fireworks when it's like sunny outside six o'clock in summer and they were just like what is that? yeah you can't even see the fireworks you just hear the bang so what people just love hearing explosions or something then we obviously have our church bells although we don't know much about churches and bells but I don't think you should play the bells for three hours straight, twice a day, all the time. We have them a lot here. <laughs> and once these bells will stop ringing, then we have construction noise with the guys drilling and hammering throughout the day. Even on, like, I know we're kind of old people, but should you actually be drilling at 10 in the evening on Sundays? Like, I don't think so, but of course we live right next to a huge hotel, but Try moving somewhere in Malta where there is no construction works going on. Not that our location is at fault, it's just everywhere. And then we have all our uh, garbage cars. Oh god, we have these narrow streets where the garbage trucks are trying to... Where the garbage trucks are trying to pass and they will be like... Mm, mm, beep, beep. Well, you get the point, right? <laughs> That's exactly how they sound, but well, the noise here is, you know, a bit of a problem, I would say. If I could give you an advice, try to live on the quiet street, not like on the main road, and try to keep your doors and windows closed, because that might help you. <laughs> try not to live on, uh, live on the ground floor, because it's a god. <laughs> yeah, that's the worst, so if you have a possibility... Like, live... Um, further up <laughs> yeah and in like these kind of side streets where cars don't pass so crazy yeah we uh, when we first moved here 
uh, we stayed in Salima and we were on on a quite busy road and I had a hard time sleeping there. I'm just not used to the noise like that and it bothered me a lot. So if you feel like you have same problems, you probably want to consider that. Because we even had the windows closed, didn't we? Everything, yeah. And the buses, they start around 4 in the morning. They are very loud. So if you have, if you don't have as much traffic in the morning, you think you would be fine, the bus will get you. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next con that we have in our list. All right, so the noise stopped so we can continue with our con. So the next con about Malta is how extremely narrow... Uh, you would think they stopped. You, you think they stopped, but nah, not yet. The next thing is how extremely narrow the walkway paths are for pedestrians. Looking at the si uh, size of the island, you would think this is better for walking than driving, but it's not built this way. It's built prioritizing the cars. And if you want to walk, you might find not all streets will be suitable for that. So there's rarely a street where two people fit right next to each other so if we like to walk together it's almost impossible sometimes the walkways for pedestrians just end out of nowhere and you can just go there only by cars and the <laughs> and the zebra crossings are in the weirdest places ever like they're like i don't know half a kilometer away from the bus stop which makes absolutely no sense so we're in a bus stop and the next way to cross the street is there is no way no cross paths for pedestrians there the closest one is but you can there see the sign. <laughs> but it's far away crossings with traffic lights are basically installed so that people can pass in like 10 seconds and then the red light so that cars can pass will stay for about two minutes. So basically the whole infrastructure in the country is very pedestrian unfriendly. And for people who like us who don't have a car, it's, you know, kind of annoying. It's also like we're living in a central area. It's not like we live somewhere in the country where, where there is no roads or no possibility. Okay, so moving on to the next one. How disproportionate are salaries against property costs in Malta? I mean, due to the size of the country and how quickly everything's developing and the limited space in the country, the property and even renting prices are very high if you compare them to average salary even though Malta has higher salaries than half of European Union it still doesn't seem like a normal person can afford to buy a property in their lifetime yeah basically average uh, cost of apartment in central area not even actually I don't see much difference between mm -hmm. anywhere in Ireland would be like 250,000 to like 500,000 for like one bedroom apartment and it's insane to me because average salaries here after uh, what I've seen is I don't know starting from anywhere from 15,000 a year that would be the low end and then about to like 30,000 a year would be the higher end and if you're like unless you're something really really special you probably won't get like Basically, much more than that yeah basically your only option is taking a mortgage which some people just don't want to but if you're planning to save to buy a property that will take you about 50 years i think yeah if you don't have any spendings like try to find uh, try to uh calculate how much would it be to uh, live on let's say the average twenty thousand euros a year um and giving let's say even if you're lucky enough to give half of it away it would be only ten thousand a year for your property and if the cost is on the lower end let's say you're lucky you get something for two hundred thousand I, I don't do the maths but it's like a lot of years exactly and then if you're planning to start a family you know then your one bedroom apartment is not gonna cut it so the cost will keep rising but the salaries won't so that's one thing that we've noticed that like if you're planning to buy property here like 
it might be a little bit different. I, I think uh, that's one of the main reasons we're not actually thinking of buying anything here or live, uh, staying here long term because it just doesn't seem realistic for us. Like, and for a lot of people, usually the statistics are that foreigners stay here for three to... Two and a half years is the average. Yeah, and then people leave because even though the country is great, but if you're thinking about your life in long term, then, you know... Probably it, won't make it. Yeah, it might not seem that realistic. All right, moving on to the next one, eh? Okay, the bell stopped ringing for a couple of minutes. We already had our lunch, we chilled around the house, so now we can continue the video. And our next con is that everything in Malta takes a little bit longer than you expect it to be. So starting from getting our D's to stay here, to get internet connection, to renew our driving licenses, postal services. Oh God, postal, <laughs> postal services is another story. But... Yeah, but everything that you are trying to do, just plan extra time because things just take a lot longer. It's extremely blue sky today. Yes, it's beautiful as fuck. Well. It's yeah. Okay, so moving on to the next one. And the next one is that you can buy everything in the same store. So you kind of have to plan your routes to go everywhere to get the best deals around the town because uh, Little has the best prices and it's far away and it doesn't have any vegan selection so you have to go to another store. You go to the tower shop which is kind of close. It has a lot of options but it's going to be expensive. Uh, we have a lot of nearby shops like the convenience shop and Dave's and stuff like that which are really close. Um, the prices are average but they pretty much have really bad selection. They have no veggies at all. So we have to order all our vegetables from the Maltese farms, at least they deliver and the prices are good. Uh, the nearby Asian shop has all the best prices for all the Asian food selection and uh, obviously the selection there is better. If you've seen in previous videos, that's how we run around, do one shop then the another shop. So it's not like there's this one nice shop that has everything you need. So that's a little bit of con for us. Yeah, for sure. For sure. All right. So, before we move on to our pros of living in Malta and why it's such a great place, uh, we have our one last weird con, and that is insects. Yeah, all the weird creatures that they have here. Yeah, I mean, obviously there's a lot of fun creatures, but there's also some disgusting creatures. So, for when it starts getting warmer, like the springtime, the air is very humid, so we have insane amount of mosquitoes everywhere especially in our house especially if you have a house that doesn't have good ventilation and holds humidity so but to be honest i think it would be any house as long as you don't have any uh window protection on your windows they will get into your house and especially at night because at daytime they kind of hide and they'd be <laughs> like oh we're not here actually but then when uh at night time they will eat your ass yeah at night time they they feast they feast on your body so you kind of feel like you're camping outside that you have to bring in those little spray bottles of like anti-mosquito things i mean they're not poisonous as far as we're aware but they're so annoying and you can't get a good night's sleep so if you are living in malta tell us if your house also has mosquitoes or is just us and our apartment is doomed <laughs> And the second thing after the humidity is kind of gone and it gets even hotter, um, then your newest visitors are cockroaches. And yeah, uh, they kind of switch places. Uh, mosquitoes leave and cockroaches arrive. Yeah, so we don't have any mosquitoes right now because it's super hot. I think they die because it's yeah. like 30 plus degrees every day. But even if you keep your house clean and if you live in like what, sixth to ninth floor, Cockroaches find their way in like so we have at least one visitor every week and the thing is, you know, we had cockroaches in 
last minute it's not a big deal like you know these little bugs and it, they're just disgusting but these guys in Malta they're like this huge and oh, like size of your hand and they fly which makes them extra scary and extra disgusting pull out the picture so you can see what yeah. they're talking about but like that's insanely like I don't know disgusting I think everyone who's uh, been in Malta uh, for a while could totally agree and yeah. say that they've met at least once in there stay yeah so that's like this one thing we don't really like but that's our end of list for our cons of living in Malta. hey dudes this is us from the future again it turned out that the video we made is a bit too long to fit in both pros and cons in one video so we're uh, splitting them so today you're seeing the cons of living in Malta and tomorrow you'll see the pros of living in Malta so we hope you enjoyed this video if you liked it you can leave a like and if you want us to make similar videos you could subscribe that would be great and we'll see you in another video tomorrow bye